Right, we're looking at when you're solving a first order recurrence relation and it doesn't work. And there are two types. First type is when the coefficient of your un in the recurrence relation is one. So this isn't gonna work. I'm gonna to attempt to solve it, it's not gonna work. So I set off with my general solution and as my comp with my complementary function plus my particular solution. My complementary function is capital A times one to the N. My particular solution, because it's linear, is of the form AN plus B. So I know that my nth term, AN plus B, so my N plus one term is going to be AN plus one plus B. I substitute those into my recurrence relation and then I'm going to compare the coefficients. So the first thing I attempt to do is compare the coefficients of N. So on the left hand side I've got A, on the right hand side I've got A plus 3. But when I attempt to solve it, I end up with 0 equaling 3, which of course is a total nonsense. Right, the second type. Now the second type is when your particular solution is of the same form as your complementary function. So this is type two. So there's my recurrence relation I've got to solve. And the first thing I'm gonna do is set it up as normal. I'm gonna have my complementary function plus my particular solution. My complementary function is a times three to the power n, but you notice that that is in exactly the same form as my particular solution. So this isn't going to work. We'll go on it anyway. Staying with what we would always do, my particular solution for an exponential is a times three to the n. So I then think then un is a times three to the n, un plus one will be a times three to the n plus one, which of course, if I sort out the indices, will be three a to the three n. I'm going to substitute that into my recurrence relation. So I substitute that in. I'm going to, again, sort out the indices. So 3 to the n plus 1 becomes 3 times 3 to the n. I've taken out a factor of 3 to the n on the right-hand side. And now I'm going to compare my coefficients. You can see if I compare the coefficients of 3 to the power n, I've got 3a equaling 3a plus 1. 0 is 1, which of course doesn't work at all. So what we need is a system. So the system that we use is if we've got a failure case, all we do is we multiply our particular solution by n. So for your particular solution for a constant, instead of it being a, it becomes a times n. For a linear particular solution, instead of it being a n plus b, it becomes a n plus b times n. You can see I've simplified that or expanded the bracket. For your quadratic, instead of a n squared plus b n plus c, it becomes a n squared plus b n plus c times n. And obviously I can expand that as well. And for your exponential, instead of a times your number to the power n, it becomes n times a times your number to the power n. So the solution to our first failure case. So here's our first failure case, and this is what we've done to sort it out. So here's our first failure case. So what I've done is Complementary function, same, you know, same rules. I've got my general solution, complementary function plus particular solution. There's my complementary function. My particular solution, instead of an plus b, I've times it by n. So an squared plus bn. So that means my n, my un plus 1, I have to replace the n's with n plus 1. And I put that into the recurrence relation and I'm ending with my a bracket n plus 1 all squared plus bn plus 1 equals an squared plus bn plus 3n plus 5. 
I'm now going to compare coefficients. Well, coefficient of n squared gives me a equals a. No help to me at the minute. So let's look at the coefficient of n. So on the left-hand side, and you could expand your n plus 1 or squared. We've been doing that in lessons. You're going to get 2a plus b. On the right-hand side, that's b add 3. So you're going to end up taking b off both sides with 2a is 3 or a is 3 over 2. You then look at your constant term. So you can see on the left-hand side, you're going to have 1a plus 1b. And on the right-hand side, your number is 5. You know what a is. a is 1.5. So b has to be 7 over 2 or 3.5. So what you do is you then put that back in to your general solution. You know that when n is 1, u of 1 is 5. So substitute in n is 1 and u1 is 5. And you end up with 5 is a plus 3, plus 3 over 2, plus 7 over 2, which works out a is 0. So you end up with your general term, 3 over 2n squared plus 7 over 2n. And as you knew from the one that we saw in question 3, part 1, it's a quadratic sequence. Here's how you would solve failure case two. So failure case two. So we had our exponential particular solution. So what you would do is you would go at it as normal, complementary function plus particular solution. Your complementary function is a times three to the power n, but instead of your particular solution being a times 3 to the power n because of your particular solution is a failure case so you multiply that particular solution by n that means un plus 1 replaces the n with n plus 1 so putting that into your recurrence relation you're going to end up with something that looks like that so un plus 1 equals 3 un plus the 3 to the n. Gather your terms. I've rewritten my 3 to the n plus 1 as 3 times 3 to the n. And then what I'm trying to do here is compare my coefficients. So on the right hand side I took out a factor of 3 to the n and I'm now comparing the coefficients of 3 to the n. If I multiply out the brackets on the left-hand side, I've got a 3an term on both sides. Take that off both sides and I end up with 3a is 1, a is a third. So I substitute that in to my general solution. So I know that when n is 1, u1 is 2. So substituting that in to what I've got for my general solution. So I get 2 is Capital A times 3 plus a third times 3. So 2 is 3A plus 1. A is a third. So I substitute that in to my general solution. And then, so I end up with something that looks like that. And then all I've done is I've thought of a third plus 3 to the minus 1 and simplified it like that.